Hey, good evening. Um, today we'll be discussing some power issues that you may encounter when using the Raspberry Pi 2 or probably the Raspberry Pi 3 as well. So in a previous video, I was trying to connect a external two and a half inch uh, hard drive to the Raspberry Pi 2 through a um, unpowered USB to SATA conversion um, board. And I was actually encountering quite a few difficulties at the time. And what this video will go through is um, some power issues that you may encounter when using this Raspberry Pi 2. Um, so in the previous video, I was actually using this, I believe it is a um, 1.5 meter, which is about 9 feet in the US, um, cable that is um, used to connect from the USB power brick, like this one, to the Raspberry Pi 2's uh, power port, which is this uh, micro USB B uh, port. So what I was doing in the previous video was using this cable, which was not um, really advertised to um, uh, deliver a lot of current or anything. So one of the things that I noticed when I used this power cable to connect the um, hard drive, or even before that, was that the USB port was only putting out uh, 4.7 volts or so, or 4.8 volts, and um, which is kind of odd because the Raspberry Pi is supposed to get a 5 volt input. I guess I'll go ahead and actually connect this um, not high current rated um, power cable to the Raspberry Pi, and today we have a multimeter, so we'll, then we'll probe some of the points in the um, Raspberry Pi 2 to see what how much uh, voltage the Pi is actually getting. So I guess we'll go ahead and try that. So here I have a um, just, just a typical um, USB power brick that has a 2.4 amp output. Um, so this is actually uh, rated for 2.4 amps total between these two um, USB ports. And I'll just go ahead and plug that in. Yeah, then I'll go ahead and just use this, the same power cable that I used last time to power up this Raspberry Pi. This in. And this time around, I'm going to be actually um, probing some uh, points in the back of the uh, PCB, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay it upside down for right now. Okay, I'll plug this into the 2.4 amp port, and we can see the Pi is starting up. You can see the LED flashing. Okay, I verify that the Pi is up and running. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and use the multimeter to see how many volts were um, the Pi is actually receiving. So, um, from some of the research I've done, it turns out that this point, PP1 and PP2, are um, where we can sense the positive voltages. And meanwhile, um, the grounds can be picked up from uh, PP3 or any of this metal shield um, parts. But just to be safe, I'm just going to try to use PP3 and PP1 to measure the voltage that the Raspberry Pi is actually receiving from the power supply. So yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put the positive on the PP1, being careful not to hit, touch anything else. And we'll touch PP3. And the power supply is getting 4.90 volts. Okay. Okay, so now we can see that the power supply to the Raspberry Pi 2 is not quite getting the 5 volts that we should be hoping to get. Although it's within the 5% range that is um, tolerable by the Raspberry Pi, so the Pi itself will operate. Um, without any problems, well, except when you try to pull extra load from this machine. So, um, I guess I'll demonstrate that this 
has some problems by plugging in the hard drive. So here we have the 2.5 inch uh, SATA drive and we'll try plugging that in using the uh, SATA to USB conversion board as we've done previously. So we'll go ahead and plug this in to the USB port. And I'll, when we plug this in, the hard drive will not spin up and the Raspberry Pi is going to be flashing its power LED to indicate that it has power issues. Actually, we're not even getting that flashing, so I might be in pretty bad shape. Okay, Pi itself is alive, but its power um, LED is not even on. And the hard drive, oops, the hard drive is actually making weird noises. Probably the coil trying to, probably the coil in the um, hard drive is trying to start up, but it's just making a bunch of whining noises. So as we can see, the hard drive is not able to start up. And we'll use the multimeter to probe um, the actual voltage that's being delivered to the Raspberry Pi at this point. So once again, I'm gonna probe the voltage. 4.7577, somewhere around there. So we can see that there's a voltage drop due to um, extra load being on the Pi. And even so, the Pi is not able to start this up, so I'm kind of guessing that um, the protection circuit that's on the um, Raspberry Pi is um, actually preventing uh, more current being delivered to the hard drive and subsequently um, is preventing the voltage from dropping too low to the point that the Pi is unable to operate. Because at this point it's able to operate. So it's probably trying to allow the hard drive to get the um, power that it's wanting, but um, as soon as the voltage drops too low, it prevents it. And it's probably going back and forth, back and forth, kind of evident with this repeated squealing noise that this um, hard drive is making. All right, so now that we know that at least with this setup where we have the power brick, which says that it supports 2.4 amps and this power cable, unfortunately, we're not able to start up the hard drive. Now, I have another USB cable, which claims that it can deliver two amps. Um, this is much shorter than the um, USB cable that I'm using right now. It's 50 centimeters, so that's about 20 inches. So it's about 20 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, swap the power out once I turn the Raspberry Pi off. So we're back. Um, I've swapped out the other USB cable with the um, higher rated cable that I just mentioned that I'll plug in. It's nice and short. This doesn't look like 50 centimeters. It looks like 3 to me, but well, whatever. It shouldn't be too different. Anyway, I'm gonna plug this into the uh, power brick that supports 2.4 amps. Click. And we'll see if I power up. And it's booting. All right, now the Pi is booted up. Um, let's go ahead and probe the voltage of the Pi. So let's see how many volts we're getting on the Pi this time around. 5.05 volts. So this seems like it's a getting a healthy amount of voltage, which is a good thing. Now, um, let's actually try connecting the hard drive and see if it can power up or not. All right, let's see if the hard drive will start up. Oh yeah, I hear the hard drive spinning up. All right, let's see if the hard drive is recognized. Oh yeah, so the hard drive is recognized. All right, and at this point, let's um, check the 
voltage that the um, Raspberry Pi is actually getting right now. All right, this time around we get 5.03 volts. That's good. Um, I think the last time around we were actually seeing a much larger voltage drop when we connected the hard drive. So, what was it? 4.9 volts, which down, went down to about 4.75 volts. This time around, uh, we went from 5.05 volts down to 5.03 volts. Um, so the voltage drop due to this load being added was tiny compared to um, the last time around when we were using the other USB cable. So the only difference in this result was caused by using this USB cable, which was not rated for um, pulling lots of power, and this USB cable, which is rated for pulling two amps. That was the only difference. So I got curious about the difference between the two wires that I've used um, in trying to power up the power, uh, Raspberry Pi, and yeah, I just splice it open. So here are the two USB wires I was using to power up the Raspberry Pi. So one on the left is the um, USB cable I was using originally, which was unable to um, start up the USB hard drive. While the one on the right is the one that I have connected right now. Well, it's the same type of wire. It's not exactly the same one, obviously. But this is the one that is um, supposed to uh, deliver two amps. Yeah, as you can see, um, so before getting into the details, when you look inside of a USB cable, they're actually composed of about uh, four wires. Well, they're composed of four wires, and they have this little extra, um, I believe it's for shielding or something, just some bare copper, thin copper wires here. And the, along with that, I think there's a shielding um, fabric kind of thing. No, it's like a metal mesh kind of thing along the actual um, shrink of the uh, cable. Yeah, so as you can see, there's the positive, the neg uh, ground, and the two wires used for data transfer. I'm not exactly sure which wires are what, but those are four wires that are in the USB cable. So basically the red and the black wires are the um, cables that are used to deliver power. The one on the left is the one that was unable to start up the hard drive, and you can see that it's very, very thin compared to the one on the right, which is nice and thick. So I believe um, all the wires on the USB cable on the left are 28 American wire gauge, while the one on the right, the data cables are 28 gauge, but the, uh, the ones for power are uh, 22 gauge. So that appears to be the difference that allows um, the cable on the right to deliver two amps of power to whatever it's connected to, while the one on the left is unable to deliver enough power to what it's connected to. So this time around, uh, we found out that the type of USB wire that's used to connect the power brick to the Raspberry Pi can actually affect the amount of power that can be delivered to the uh, Raspberry Pi itself. And depending on the type of types of loads that are connected, it could render the Pi unable to support the peripherals that are connected. So this, in this case, it was actually the hard drive that, that could not start off using this flimsy wire, but just by changing it to this uh, USB cable, it's able to deliver two and a half amps. And it's actually pretty short, so that should also reduce the amount of resistance in the wire. So that helps as well. Yeah, so basically what we found out was the wire can make a difference. So if you're having any power problems, when you connect extra USB comp uh, peripherals and are unable to use them, maybe, maybe the power cable is at fault. So it may be necessary to actually uh, research the type of USB cable that's being used because that could be what is causing um, power problems with the Pi. So I hope you found this video informative. Um, if, you, if you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you can give it a like. Um, if you'd like to see more videos like this, um, please subscribe to the channel and I hope to get more videos up in the near future. 
So thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Um, okay. So we have a little elaborate setup yeah. here. Let's see um, if it so turns on. Yeah. Now is let's take a look a, at how much current um, this uh, uh, hard drive pulls as a SATA. It is connected. To USB converting, or actually SATA to USB Pi to USB conversion um, dongle set thing. Doesn't sound like the hard drive starting up. Is, um, so from the hard drive. I have so it's pulling and connected to this little converter thing. Zero point two amps, twenty amps of the Raspberry Pi two. The hard drive doesn't seem to be starting up. Now connected to the hard drive right now is power.